and gentlemen, here she is, the hilarious Kathy Griffin. I actually found out that yesterday, accused murderess Jody Arias started following me on Twitter. Um, hold on, so you can tweet from prison? So, allegedly, I say allegedly before everything. I think this is true. I guess she's having a friend twat for her from... <laughs> I hope you follow my little twats on, on Twitter. My little twats always trying to make you laugh. And so anyway, I, all of a sudden, I'm besieged with twats yesterday from people saying, what do you think of Jody Arias following you on Twitter? Of course, I've never thought about it, but um, it's kind of crazy. She's only following 14 people. And it's a really, it's a very odd group. Um, she is following Anderson Cooper. <laughs> Who I know you love. I know. Gays, you finally got him. You f waited him out. The gays will wait someone out. I don't even know if he was always gay. I think you guys were just waiting at his door, like, come on, let's go. I will wait and wait and wait. You got him. Wait him out. All right, so. Jody Arias is following me. She's following Donald Trump. She's following Christiane Amanpour. It's a freaking weird group. Although, um, I will tell you, I am obsessed with the trial. And um, I'm obsessed with, are you watching it? I, everyone's acting nervous. Just because I'm gonna make fun of an alleged murderer. Um, <laughs> Because I admit, I admit that I have a way too high threshold for dark sh being funny. Way too high. So get ready. Um, and also, you showed up at the Late Show, so f act like it, okay? Because All right. So anyway, one of the things I find fascinating about this trial is um, the impending Lifetime movie. Right? If you're watching anything about the Jody Arias trial, it's got all the elements of a fantastic Lifetime movie. So I like that before the trial, she was like a hot blonde with platinum hair. Have you seen those pictures? Then, after she allegedly killed a guy, she's now a brunette with bangs and glasses, like a freaking librarian. <laughs> And supposedly the story is, and I guess there's a few different stories, but you know, now that she's one of my Twitter followers, I gotta be up on this stuff. And um, supposedly the story is that she was dating this dude and then um, when he said he wanted to start seeing other people, which guys we love, <laughs> we think that's great. <laughs> and when we tell you we're fine with it, don't get in the shower. <laughs> All right, look, I don't know how many times I can say allegedly, but the way it allegedly happened is almost, I don't wanna say funny, but comical, here's why. So supposedly the guy says, I wanna start seeing other people. Jody, you know, I'm assuming she's twitching. And here, here's what you might wanna look out for, guys, is when your lover says, um, hey, now that you've told me you wanna start seeing other people, you know it'd be fun. You are so cute and sexy that you should get into the shower right now where I'm going to take some pictures of you. Um, if you hear your partner
partner of any gender saying that, I would just stay dirty because <laughs> that's a bad sign. So allegedly what Jody did was she said to the guy, get in the shower and you're so hot, we're gonna take pictures. I'm gonna take pictures of you. And they weren't just any pictures. It was him in the shower and he looked like, you know, like Nick Carter from a Backstreet Boys video or something. <laughs> And then allegedly, two minutes, like when you see those pictures of him in the shower on HLN, allegedly, two minutes later, she accidentally stabbed him 27 times <laughs> and shot him twice in the head. Don't you hate when that happens? <laughs> and what I find, oopsies, oopsies. So what's interesting to me is that now that the trial is happening and um, she is on the stand, and I believe she was on the stand for 18 days, maybe not a great idea, but she did do her roots because she is a brunette through and through right now, trust me. So anyway, she's been on the stand and leave it to Arizona, the freaking second craziest state after Florida. Leave it to Arizona to have an obscure law where the jury can actually ask the defendant questions. I know, everyone, all you guys all got nervous. We're not even murderers, and I, I, me too. And I, not if, but when I kill someone. Um, oh no, I'm a bitter bitch. I'm a bitter bitch. A long kill list. Do you have a kill list? <laughs> Me too. It's long. Mine's like a scroll. It's long. Long. And I cannot imagine the jury then asking me questions because I can't really imagine, like, what's a jury of my peers? Andy Dick and Sarah Silverman? <laughs> so, I better not kill anybody. But anyway, I wrote down, because of course I like to do my research and development for you, Santa Rosa, I wrote down some questions that the jury actually asked Jody Arias. Um, one of, and by the way, just keep in mind her defense is, she just can't remember. <laughs> Slipped her mind. Okay, so one of the questions, and I quote, what is your understanding of the word skank? it like well for me it's really semantics all right so Jody's answer was and I quote I don't know an official definition but it's a very negative word for women well played Jody well played and then this is for the gays one of the jurors actually said to Jody Arias as if this is the most important thing about the trial why do you feel so uncomfortable about anal sex So then the answer was, well, in previous relationships, it was something that we did try once or twice. But with Travis, it was his preference. And that's why I got all the KY. It made it less uncomfortable. <laughs> when you're right, you're right, honey. <laughs> did you just turn to him and be like, well, it does. I swear to God, you're so busted. I just saw her like. All right, so now I'm in just gay boy heaven. Cause there's Barbara Streisand. So she sits down and she was incredibly nice and approachable. And so I said, hi, so nice to meet you. My name's Kathy Griffin, I'm a comedian. I would love it if you would just sing people. <laughs> tell you about going to Jane Fonda's birthday party. Yes, you heard me. All right, so first of all, of course, I love her. I love anybody who's gotten in trouble and stands by their convictions. And I've gotten to meet a bunch of cool people because of her, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, so, and you know, I just freaking love celebrities. I just am fascinated by them and I'm dazzled by them. And I think anyone who acts like it isn't exciting to just see a celebrity is full of shit. Every time 
I get excited. And believe it or not, I actually rarely approach a celebrity. Because believe it or not, I know you'd think I'd like, I don't know, go up and try to talk to them. But I would rather just sort of, I don't know, sit back and observe and watch them. And then um, come to Santa Rosa and talk about them. Um, oh, the word relative. Anyway, so... So anyway, I go to the Jane Fonda birthday party with my boyfriend and explain to him who everyone is. And, um... <laughs> what am I thinking? You guys, there is an 18-year age difference. This is not right. Oh, yeah, it's really appropriate for me to talk to his mom about what her life is going to be like when she's my age. <laughs> very sweet. Okay, so anyway, we go to this party, and it was, it was like more star-studded than the Academy Awards. I mean, it was Sean Penn and Tom Hanks, and, you know, Ted Turner gave the toast. It was that kind of a gig. So I was in celebrity heaven, right? So um, I'm standing there, and then all of a sudden Maria Shriver walks up. And I think she's great. I just think she is smart and represents women in a great way, and I'm a big fan of hers. She, uh, not uh, a fan of mine, but <laughs> that doesn't stop me from loving or respecting someone. I don't know if you guys have that, you know, if there is anyone that you actually really like and respect and they don't care for you, but that's like m most people in my life. So I'm just saying, certainly in the celebrity world, I don't really care if you like me. I might still just really like you anyway. So I, of course, don't know Maria Shriver and I've never met her, but we just happen to be standing next to each other. And when Ted Turner starts the toast, you kind of stop and listen. And then Bill Maher was next to me and I love and respect Bill as well. And then, yes, I think his show is great. So then Maria Shriver, I say hello to her and I've never met her. And um, she actually looks at my boyfriend and she's like, oh, is this your boyfriend? And I said, yes. And, you know, don't start with the age difference. And, um, you know, she said something like, um, weren't you married? And I said, yes, I was married, but my husband, you know, uh, didn't treat me very well and there were some improprieties. <laughs> Ring a bell. And, um, <laughs> Once again, I didn't gauge the situation properly. <laughs> and of course, at that moment, I decide to once again try to be funnier, because then I'm gonna win her over. And this is a formula that I would say works about a good solid 7% of the time. <laughs> and I'm sticking with it. So, so we were chatting, and um, then after I said, ring a bell, she then said to Bill Maher, will you please throw her in the pool? And I was dangerously close to the edge of the pool, and while I was trying to be witty, I also was thinking, I really might get thrown in the pool by Maria Shriver. And then it all got better because Barbara Streisand walked in. Thank you. Thank you for the appropriate response. Like I said, I've had the opportunity to meet many celebrities and talented people, but there's something about Streisand. Like, there's, a, there's the Cher, the Bat, the Liza, the Streisand. There's a few that are in a category unto themselves. And also, Streisand's not like a partier, you know? It's not like you see her out and about a lot, right? So this was a very star-studded party, and yet when she walks in, it was like a freaking E.F. Hutton commercial. I mean, everybody just turns and looks. And I mean, everyone got nervous. It seemed like the whole party got a little bit nervous. And so I just turned to Maria Shriver. I go, Shriver, Streisand is here. Ask her to sing. And... Because Barbara Streisand is notorious for never wanting to sing at like a party. Like she's just not somebody that's gonna say like, hey, somebody start tickling the ivories and let's sing. Like that's not, not her thing. And... Um, so Maria Shriver did not find that amusing. And then she said, well, I'm not gonna ask her that. And I said, go ahead, play the Kennedy card. And then, <laughs> I love the Kennedys. <laughs> now I'm getting why it ended up the way. Okay, so she goes, you play the Kennedy card. I'm sick of it. And I said, all right, I'll try to get her to sing. So. So sure enough, Barbara Streisand walks past me, and you know, even I'm not like so insane, I'm gonna go talk to Barbara Streisand. But I will say the bad thing is that she happened to walk past me and go to the buffet and land at the most delicious pan 
of hot chocolate bread pudding I've ever seen in my life. Now, I know Barbara Streisand is an amazing star, but I'm going to be honest, the minute I saw that pudding, I was just steely focused, and I knew the timing was bad, but I was like, is that chocolate bread pudding? Okay, so I didn't want to go get some right then, because of course Barbara Streisand would think I was stalking her, so I, I waited, and she was taking too long. And being from a big family, you got to get that food or else somebody else is going to get it. So somehow the Griffin mentality took over and I happened to be next to her and then, you know, I didn't say anything to her, but it was just sort of exciting to look at her and whatever. So then I realized, okay, I am in over my head at this party. There are just too many A-listers and too many famous people, but I do love to watch it. So I basically took my boyfriend and I said, let's just go find the kids' table. So we found the farthest table from, we were practically sitting in the shrubbery. Like we just were at the most distant table. So then Eva Longoria comes up to me and she goes, is this a kid's table? And I was like, yes. So Eva Longoria sits down at our table because she realizes this is the kid's table. And then accidentally, it kind of turned out to be the fun table. <laughs> so I'm talking to Eva and I'm, you know, comfortable with her. And then Barbara Streisand is still just a few feet away. So I say to Eva Longoria, Longoria, go get Streisand, see if she'll sing. And she goes, <laughs> She goes, she's not going to sing. And I go, well, go see if she wants to sit here. And she's like, I don't, I don't know, I'm kind of scared of her. I go, that's the thing. Everybody at this party is scared of her. And I go, but you're in the Obama mafia with her. You've done fundraisers. Go get her. <laughs> so then she's like, yeah, you're right. I actually know Barbara. So then she freaking goes over, and I can see him talking politics, politics. Boom, brings back Streisand. I know like a stork with a baby, just delivering the baskets. <laughs> All right, so now I'm in just gay boy heaven, because there's Barbara Streisand, so she sits down, and she was incredibly nice and approachable. And so I said, hi, so nice to meet you. My name's Kathy Griffin, I'm a comedian. I would love it if you would just sing people. <laughs> and Eva looks at me, and the boyfriend looks at me like, mm. <laughs> we just had this talk. And, um, and then, I don't know why the gods were smiling, but she actually had a sense of humor and she laughed and she said, oh yeah, you know how much I love singing at parties. And I was like, I know, just seriously, like just two verses. And so, <laughs> so we were chatting and then it really did accidentally turn into the table. So then I see Sean Penn and he's talking to Chelsea Handler and I know Chelsea very well, I love Chelsea. Oh, by the way, I have to tell you this one, this one thing that my mom said about Chelsea that I thought was so funny. She goes, because Chelsea Handler did my show twice, and she was a hilarious guest, and she's great. And so, anyway, my mom goes, you know what? I like that Chelsea Handler. She's snarky and funny. And unlike you, she doesn't piss off all the ones who sign the checks. <laughs> funny because it's true. Um, so anyway, I see Sean Penn. I am at the table with Eva Longoria and Barbara Streisand. I don't know Sean Penn. I've never met Sean Penn. So I decide to say, Penn, come here. <laughs> so because Barbara Streisand is there, Sean Penn walks over and he's visibly crazy, just so you know. Like uh, he actually lives not too far from here, but he's got the ponytail and he's just seen some shit. And he looks like he just left Haiti a minute ago. Like he's just tightly wound is what I would say. So anyway, Sean Penn comes up to the table and then next thing you know, Warren Beatty comes up to the table. And I also do not know Warren Beatty and I'm very dazzled by him. So I said, Warren, who here at the table have you <laughs> Then I knew it was time to go. I said to Carrie Fisher, let's go. So. <laughs> So this photo of Thebes shows him coming in at maybe like a, a good 112 pounds. And he actually is on tape saying to the paparazzi, y'all want some of this? You want some of this? Let's talk about the Beebs right now, right here. Okay, first of all, I did not think the Beebs would, you know, go down like so fast, so hard. And... <laughs> I am fascinated by him. I think he's a great singer. I get why the girls like him. Um, I love me a wig. You know that's my favorite thing. Oh, 
the Beebs is very thug. I don't know if you know this. He's very thug. And if there's one thing that I will always be amused by, it is a rich white suburban kid who thinks he's black. <laughs> so when I see the Beebs in interviews, grab it as jock, yo girl, what's up? It's me, Justin Bieber. Hey, hi, what's up? What's... Okay, I have to laugh at Whitey. Sometimes you have to laugh at Whitey. And it's just funny. Oh, did you guys notice Justin Timberlake is white again? Yes. Yes. Okay, so Justin Timberlake used to be, in his mind, so black that he was like from a tribe in Africa or something. I don't know what he thought, but now with the new record, he's with the suit and tie and he's white again with straight hair. He just turned white with one record. <laughs> All right, Biebs is sticking to the thug hood image, which fits him very well. Now, I don't know if you saw a photo of him recently, but uh, apparently he's been getting into some altercations. And once again, making some life choices, not so great. I guess he's driving, you know, Ferraris or Lamborghinis and then loaning them to his friends, Lil Za, Lil Twist, Lil Lil's. Um, and so, and, uh, and anyway, so there's a photograph of him in London where he was angry with a paparazzi, which is fine, I get it, but decided to try to start a fight with the photographer and his bodyguard is of course like seven times bigger than he is. So this photo of Biebs shows him coming in at maybe like a, a good 112 pounds and... <laughs> And he actually is on tape saying to the paparazzi, you all want some of this? You want some of this? And the bodyguard, being a bodyguard is so large that it actually looks like when he's holding beads, he has him in a baby Bjorn. I'm just saying, you know, he's a thin, young man and his skull cap is so big I feel like at any moment it could just fall on his face like a cartoon <laughs> so I of course happened to look at a um, let's just say a weekly periodical that wrote an article about the Beebs that I'm sure is hundred percent accurate <laughs> I don't think it was an encyclopedia but uh, something the star or in touch or whatever anyway so allegedly a source says and by source, I assume it's just whoever wrote the article. Everyone is worried about Justin Bieber. He is smoking weed and drinking Sizerp nonstop. <laughs> Hold on, we're gonna get to it because I am obsessed with it. Okay, Sizerp, also known as Purple Drank, D-R-A-N-K, because Biebs is so thug, he pronounces it drink. Um, is a potentially lethal combo of prescription cough syrup, Fanta and Jolly Ranchers. <laughs> All right. Let me break it down. Every so often, you know, I'm, I'm in very good health. Every so often my voice will give out, I do stand up. I've actually had codeine cough syrup. Let me tell you what it does. It makes you sleep and not cough. <laughs> Am I missing something? So the kids are now getting high. In, instead of like, you know, ecstasy or a, like a drug, the whole goal is to go out and party, not cough and then sleep. I, I don't, I don't. What am I missing? Okay, so supposedly the way you, you ingest Sizerp is you put it in like a big ghetto cup and you fill it with Fanta, which I didn't think even existed anymore. <laughs> so I guess you have to go into a time machine and go back to 1977 and get some Fanta or Sunkist. I didn't even think they still made those. And then you put in Cody and cough syrup, which I don't even know how you get. Like, is Justin Bieber just going to a doctor going, <laughs> like how? <laughs> Whenever I've had codeine cough syrup, I have to be like near death and have no voice at all. 
And the, what's funny is I actually had walking pneumonia about six months ago. And I remember for the first time in my life, I was like, so, you know, I, I can't sleep very well and I'm coughing all night. And the guy was like, um, is there something we need to talk about? And I'm like, well, I, I can barely even talk. What are you talking about? And it was so funny. I got a prescription for codeine cough syrup that was like this big. I swear they gave me two spoonfuls because of that Justin Bieber and Lil Wayne. <laughs> Seeing it with Fanta and Jolly Ranchers. What does that make you do? Barf? <laughs> Woo! I party. I sleep, don't cough, and then barf. What's going on? All right, so let's talk about Lil Wayne because he's another one that is just getting away with so much stuff because I just feel like whatever phase he's going through, people are just like giving him the crazy pass. They're just giving him the crazy pass. I've met him, he's very nice, he's a very talented artist, obviously. Um, so, allegedly, he was in the hospital recently for a week in a coma, a coma, from Cizerp. How much Cizerp do you have to drink? To go into a coma. How many cans of Fanta are you getting at Ralph's before the counter person at 7-Eleven cuts you out? So anyway, I, I think he's denying that he was in a coma. I don't know if he was in a coma, but let me tell you something. If Nicki Minaj is going to visit you, people think you're dying. I don't know how near death he was. There were reports that he really was near death. But let me tell you, if someone from the label is calling Nicki Minaj saying, put on the pink wig and go visit Lil Wayne, it's bad. And then when you see Drake being photographed going to visit him, like who wants to make that call? Hi, Drake. Anyway, I don't know what you're doing, but Lil Wayne might be dying. So if you could grab Nicki Minaj and a couple of wigs and get over there, this may be your last shot. Wayne came out of it okay and sure enough he puts a video out with T.I. You guys if you haven't seen it it's so funny. It's unintentionally funny but I really thought it was going to be a video where Lil Wayne was like thanking his fans and I'm okay now. I thought he might say what was wrong with him. It was Lil Wayne and T.I. You got to look this up tonight when they're just sitting next to each other somewhere. I don't even know where it was in a hospital and they're like yo what's up my where do we made it so and then at the end of the video, he's like, oh, and seriously, y'all, thanks for the support. I feel good. <laughs> Do you know how pissed my mom's going to be at this? God damn it, Kathleen Mary. Talking about my mother's vagina, for Christ's sake. That woman was a goddamn saint. Son of a bitch. I will say that I love the LGBTQIA community. Lesbian, bisexual, gay, transgender, questioning, intersex allies. So, you know, we just kind of found each other and we've been together all these years and it's just a love fest. And, you know, I do joke though with my gay friends about I am so familiar to gay men in particular that often the way they compliment me is a way that you have to really be immersed in this world to get. But I can't tell you, like when I started dating this guy, he couldn't believe the shit that gay guys say to me, like at airports. So he is now used to like walking down the street with me holding my hand and just hearing, I love you, <laughs> Oh my God, Diva! I'm gonna bend you over and you up the I love you. I love your gash, bitch. You're making me blush. All right, so. The deal with the boyfriend is this, he is uh, normal and yet I, okay, so here's the deal. All right, so he's now met my family several times and I don't know why, but I swear to God, last Sunday, they've met him several times, they adore him. Last Sunday, they decided to rip off their masks for the first time. I don't know if you guys have any family members who do this, but they have like a certain persona when they meet your partner for the first few times and then they just reach their limit. <laughs> And last Sunday was it. I mean, they showed up at my house. They were themselves. I love them. I know them to be this way, but they ripped off that mask like the Phantom of the opera. <laughs> and 
he just couldn't get it because I went to his house for Thanksgiving and I, I think his family is so weird. Okay, get this. First of all, there's only two kids. Now, coming from an Irish Catholic family, that is a sign that something is very, very wrong. Um, I don't know if you know this, my mom, this is true, my mom is the youngest of 19. I swear to God. Can you imagine my poor grandma's vagina? Because no birth control for the Irish Catholics, oh no, that was going against the Lord's will. Her vagina must have been puttering like a chitty chitty bang bang. <laughs> and that was when they had steam engines. So, do you know how pissed my mom's gonna be at this? God damn it, Kathleen Mary. Talking about my mother's vagina for Christ's sake. That woman was a goddamn saint. Son of a bitch. You and I are gonna walk the stations of the cross. <laughs> Where are they? All right, so, so anyway, last Sunday, they all come over for dinner and he couldn't believe how we never like let the other ones talk, right? And this is why I do this. And so you guys like, let me talk. So they come over and first of all, I've ordered like a huge, like several pans of lasagna. I've ordered enough garlic bread for a small army. I ordered salad and then when he went to get all the food, he came back and they forgot to put in the salad. And he's like, oh my gosh, you want me to go back? I was like, what? Are you kidding? Who cares about salad? Get out of the way. And then it was like go time. He couldn't believe it. He, we were like animals. I mean, he said, he goes, why does your family have a prison mentality when it comes to food? And so he actually, he, it, with my family of all people, he starts to actually cut the lasagna into portions. Like we have time to wait for that shit. Because while he's cutting portions, one of my siblings could be getting my food and we all just grabbed ladles and knives and forks and just started eating it. And then I grabbed like 16 pieces of garlic bread because it could be my last day on earth. And I went and sat by myself. And he was just standing there like, what just happened? There's like seven people, the food's just gone and it's falling off the plates. And I'm accusing my siblings of stealing my food and they weren't. And then we were all trying to talk at the dinner table and of course immediately it's political fights. Mom, you can't watch Fox News. I wanna watch my boyfriend, Bill O'Reilly. Mother, it is propaganda. Now, if Sean Hannity comes on, damn it, Kathleen. So we're all fighting. And then nobody lets anyone talk. And so my poor brother tries to get in a word edgewise and he actually says, wait, 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 I wanna talk. I, I have facts. So I was like, two minutes, go. And he goes, okay, okay, this is a really good story. Um, anyway, I was taking mom to a doctor's appointment and um, it was really funny because it was Monday. Wait, no, wait, it might've been Tuesday. Wait, wait, it was Monday, I think at three. And time's up, Joyce, what do you got? I mean, he was just watching with pinwheel eyes and, and then the food was just sort of gone. And then the great thing is my niece and nephew brought a bag of just junk food because they were so fearful I wouldn't have enough. <laughs> and so we were, they were just randomly having Chips Ahoy. And then my nephew is wearing a nerd rope. You know what this is? It's a rope of candy nerds around his neck. So then my dog Larry is jumping on him all night. <laughs> And Larry's 100 pounds, by the way. And I have two of the most ill-behaved, even though I love them, dogs you have ever seen. And let me tell you why. I'm gonna call bullshit on the dog rescue community right to your face. That's right, you heard me. I know those people do amazing work. They are brave. They go and they save these animals. But let me tell you, they will lie through their teeth. You know I'm right. They will say anything to get you to adopt that dog. And I fall for it every time. This is Pom Pom. She's really good with other dogs. She loves children. She'd be appropriate in any family. She's fixed and trained and doesn't chew anything. She's an assassin killer. She was not trained. She wasn't fixed. She ate half my house for no reason. She's a bad bitch. I love her, 
But she's all about the kill. She's all about the kill. Okay, so I live in a house that actually has some, like, you know, obviously there's occasional birds or a gecko or a lizard. Um, she doesn't just kill these innocent animals. She just likes to gut them for the joy of the kill. <laughs> oh, yes. When she brings me a gutted bird, I'm like, th thanks? Okay, so last week, I walk in the backyard and I see Pom Pom, and now that she's older, she just doesn't ever get guilty. You know, when she was younger, if I tried to scold her, she would at least kind of look a little bit guilty, and I'd think, oh, she learned her lesson. No. <laughs> Last week, I walk in the yard, and there's a half of an alive lizard just coming out of her mouth. But wait for it, she doesn't have that many teeth left. Why? Because the dog rescuers didn't tell me that she chews rocks. For no reason. Let me tell you, she's very well fed and taken care of. I've had her teeth cleaned. Trust me, this is a dog that is taken care of who just eats rocks for fun. So I go to the backyard, she's got a half alive lizard, and I go, Pom Pom, no. And I swear to God, she just goes, <sighs> All right, so, of course, we're gonna talk about Amanda Bynes. First of all, I know her. I actually had a small role in a movie that she did that, like, I think went straight to video. But anyway, it was, you know, it was fun to get to know her. And she was, seemed normal, and she was very professional and stuff. Okay, so I don't know her well enough to call her now and say, what's going on with your wig and your skull cap? But, <laughs> but I am fascinated by Amanda Bynes because she seems to be part of this sort of new wave of celebrities that can just do super crazy stuff and get away with it because as we watch them, we're fearing for their own safety and mental health to the point where no matter what they do, we're just like, oh, you know, you know I don't know. So Amanda Bynes, is allegedly doing stuff like going shopping, locking yourself in dressing rooms for two hours and crying. Do you know how many times I've wanted to do that? <laughs> that sounds like a dream. I mean, you go into a dressing room and the lighting is horrible and you feel self-conscious and you just want to take a bunch of clothes and burst into tears and blow off some steam for a couple of hours. But no, there's a salesperson going, get out, we're calling the cops. <laughs> Amanda Bynes has got it all figured out, I'm telling you, and now, Supposedly, she's, she went into an adult gym class, which I didn't even know that existed. Like, what is, what is she doing, the balance beam or the uneven bars? I don't even know what that means, an adult gym class. But anyway, I guess she went into an adult gym class somewhere in New York and was standing on her head and talking to herself. And she didn't get in trouble. They were all just like, oh, she'll come down eventually. And, and now, and this isn't alleged, now the photos of Amanda Bynes show her with two stud earrings in her face. In her face. Okay, so let me just say this. I am fascinated by all the young girls piercing themselves in ways that I would say would lead to infection. I, no, this is what's amazing to me. I one slightly dirty guy, and I get a infection, and I'm on Cipro for a week. This bitch is putting earrings in her face, and she's fine. <laughs> Some men consider it more intimate than intercourse. Your moist, warm mouth combined with the oral gymnastics your lips and tongue are performing. They're getting very Fifty Shades. In Red Book these days. So I have to tell you about an interview I do with Red Book, and here's why. I don't think I'm appropriate for Red Book <laughs> in any way, because when I think of Red Book, I think of my mom having the Red Book magazine as a kid, and there was maybe a Christmas quilt on the cover, and there were recipes and how to, you know, restuff a pillow and, you know, Flat, a flattering way to wear a girdle. Like, I, I just, I'm just saying, I, I was flattered they asked me to do an interview, but I didn't really know how to talk to Red Book because, you know, my life is jokes and, um, you know, then some jokes. So, 
So sure enough, I decided to kind of prep for the interview and I went online and I learned that um, I was not ready for today's Red Book. Now, I, I brought you an actual article that I was looking at while I was doing the interview. And this is a quote. And I'm, quite a, I'm proud of Red Book for changing with the times. I wasn't quite prepared for this. And the article is called, from Red Book, Do I Really Have to Give Him a Blowjob? <laughs> Red Book. No Christmas cookies. Okay, so it was a Q&A, and the question is, and I quote, I really hate giving oral sex. I just can't get over the ick factor. Is it really that important? The answer was, to most men, it is important. <laughs> If there's one thing men say they don't get enough of, it's blowjobs. <laughs> wow, slap me in the face with your dick, Red Book. <laughs> Jesus. I continue, and here's why. Oral sex is very intimate and pleasurable. Parentheses, as you probably know from having received it, I hope. <laughs> consider it more intimate than intercourse. Your moist, warm mouth <laughs> combined with the oral gymnastics your lips and tongue are performing. They're getting very Fifty Shades <laughs> up in Red Book these days. Can create a multitude of thrilling sensations. And all the while, he gets to lie back and focus only on his pleasure without any pressure to perform. This guy sounds like a lousy lay. <laughs> you do it. Quit gagging. Um, and, then, and then Red Book says, my question to you is, what exactly turns you off about blowjobs? Lots of women describe that ick factor you mentioned. Do, the, do you view the male genitals as dirty? For some, the practice is degrading. And some girls say, good girls don't. And then they take it home. And I don't mean that as a metaphor. I don't mean <laughs> the typical. And then they say, let me reassure you that blowjobs can be fun. And finally, between you and me, no, you don't have to swallow. 